What's up guys, who remembers this build, right? Jeez, I can't, this is so freaking heavy. I forgot how much stuff I crammed in here. This is Mark's build. This is the Destiny 2 build, the Warlock theme. Uh, yeah, so what I like to do whenever we build computers and stuff is every now and then I want to like kind of just do a once over on it. Um, I'm kind of curious as to how much dirt and dust might have actually made its way in here. This is the Node 202 case, and this was the first case mod build I did on this channel where I was like, I'll show you guys some of my painting and modification techniques. More so so you guys can get an idea of like the Star Wars build and where we're headed. Signal RGB is a free platform enabling you to take control of your entire multi-brand lighting setup with a single application. Support for devices from brands including Corsair, Razer, Logitech, EVGA, Asus, and more eliminate the need for multiple programs cluttering up your system. Signal RGB is also community driven and with their thriving Discord channel, users can share their custom effects including game integrations and even offer community support. Signal RGB is revolutionizing the way RGB is done and absolutely free. Take control of your RGB by clicking the sponsored link in the description below. Yeah, this was the Node 202. And I'm gonna set my Star Wars build over here just so you guys can kind of see the idea of like why right now it looks so plain. This, this looks like, well, Phil mentioned, this looks like a 3D model that has no textures to, applied to it yet. So it looks really weird. We're not done yet either. We're so, I'm still gonna be adding some more panels on here. Um, I was commenting to Nick that something felt like it was missing and we need to add some more like 3D panels where we build this up a little more. Cause I was like, this looks plain right here. So we'll be doing some more 3D paneling, building that up. But this is an idea of what it looks like. This is super weathered. I went majorly weathered themed for this one. Blew this hole here, that way we could get the AIO out here. You could say I even painted the AIO in there. If you haven't seen this video where we built this one, that was, shoot, this was pre-pandemic, wasn't it, Mark? Yeah, this is, so this is going on two years now. But I wanna open this up. I wanna see how like much dirt has made its way in there. I wanna blow it out. So the airflow pattern, this is the H100. Air comes in through here, blows across the GPU, and then these are exhausts. Nope, these are intakes. These are exhausts, so it's going this way actually. Clean air onto the GPU, because you can see the GPU right there, right? And then there's a big opening behind the GPU and that's pulling air out. It's also pulling cool air up through this giant hole that I made right there. We didn't do too much greebles on this one. I just added like, these are brackets for a water cooler here. I just added those. And again, I just want to demonstrate when you paint properly, it doesn't flake off or come off. Look at that. People always talk about like paint chips, not if you prepare it right and do it the right way. So let's open, and look, I even painted the, the hoses, right? Cause they were far too clean with them being uh, braided. Um, also too, these are just dummy wires. They're literally just glued in there. Um, that's something I'm going to be adding to the Star Wars build as well. Some external wires, like kind of, like, so when I was at Disneyland last, I bought one of the legacy lightsabers. They're like the true replica heavy lightsabers. And I got Darth Vader's and even he has some exposed wiring on the outside. I'm like, that's weird, but whatever. I just remember I had to be very careful with the way this went together. Cause we were rushing to put this together before you came. It was like one of those like house remodeling shows. We're like, they're on their way. Come on, we gotta get the pillows thrown in. You know, and they're all like trying to do the last second. Okay, this is, There we go. It's actually not that bad in there. I mean, it's dusty, but it's not awful. So not a lot of slack. How did I? You're a wizard, Harry. How did I put this together? <laughs> like, there's not enough slack on it. How did I do it? How did I do the thing? All right, so that is how I did it. I just had the AIO kind of whoop, up there and then it had to together. Oh yeah, there's a fair amount of dust in there. All right, let's blow this guy out. Yeah. All right, so the but the, 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 the so the dust wasn't really all that bad, honestly. Um, there's some dust that's still kind of stuck to Remember, there's some painted surface in here. It's really rough because I used this kind of metallic paint. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a shot of the interior so you can kind of take appreciation for how much stuff we actually fit in here. So it's a Strix, uh, what was it a Z5 or Z390 board? It's got a 9900K, um, 16 gigabytes of, I don't know how that scratch got in there. That's okay, it just matches the theme. 16 gigabytes of Dominator Platinum, Capellix RGB, uh, obviously our Corsair power supply, which is an SF600. 
All the wires are over here. Here's our 2080 Super right here. Um, we do have a two terabyte NVMe SSD down inside of there. The AIO, which was what we absolutely needed to be able to get this to not throttle because 9900K is pretty hot. But you can see now how the air, you know, goes in to the graphics card side. And if you look at the gap we have right here, I'm sure people were like, but that probably means it wouldn't have fit or you know, it would be too close to the fans. There's a huge gap right here. So half the air bypasses the, cool the cooler for the GPU, half goes into the cooler, and then the rest goes into the AIO. The AIO is situated at the top, pulling air out, so it exhausts the hot air through. Even warm air going through an AIO is better than stagnant air sitting in the case. So that is the layout for that. Um, I do want to do some temperature testing on this though, because I don't believe, I remember we did some before we gave it to Mark, but Mark was really excited to game on it and I wanted him to get it home and play with it that day. So I don't think we did much testing on it. When I tell you, this was literally like Tetris all in here. Oh, see, it's not terrible. You can see some of the dust right there on there. Ooh, look inside the fins though. That's why <laughs> it's a little kicked up in there. So interestingly enough, because the air from those fans blows directly on this graphics card, you can see the chrome plastic like insert on here actually pitted. That doesn't wipe off, that's actually pitted. You get pitted, bro, you got shwoopa. I do regret giving you this card though for one reason though, Mark. Because it's the only one I had. <laughs> well, we're gonna be doing a lot of like legacy testing, if you will. We're going back and taking like old cards, and this isn't old, but I mean like from all the way back to like a thousand series and coming all the way forward. So you know what that means. All right, so I was gonna put a 3070 in there, but actually looking at the performance difference of the 2080 Ti versus the 2080 Super, 2080 Super is about 10% slower than a 3070, but a 2080 Ti is 26% faster. So this is, hey, 26% faster, buddy. This will fit in there though. I know that for a fact, because that one did, look at this. It's just gonna be like, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. Do. Go to your home. Are you too good for your home? Now we got a 2080 Ti in here, which means now we really get to test how well the cooling works in this thing because faster means hotter. So now we are going to temperature test. So one thing I'm noticing is this fan right here, and this is why I always test with software. I just go, oh, yeah, everything looks good. This fan right here um, was going much slower like visibly, I could see the blade turning really slow. It was only turning at 100 RPM. Uh, and you can see right here, if we look at IQ, it's turning 750 RPM versus the other one's 1400 RPM. So fan one is going to the proper speed. Fan two is not, which means I'm gonna have to take this apart and make sure that it's all working. Let me check these fans. All right, so in terms of temps, our GPU is sitting at 68C right now. It's maxed out at 69 so far. That's really good. I mean, this cooler is known to get up near 80. The Founders cooler on the 2080 Ti, I remember, not a great cooler. Um, part of the problem too is these back fans, these intake fans, are not going as fast as they could. I feel like because things have updated, um, the fan speed themselves got reverted. For instance, what I found here was because they both were set to quiet, I'm noticing that there's a slow fan and a fast fan on this side, and a slow fan and a fast fan on this side. I think I accidentally swapped them. Where I believe the 2200, this is a 2200 RPM fan, this is a 1400 RPM fan. Same thing on the other side. So instead of having both 2200s on one side and a 1400 on the other side, or 1400s on one side, they're like crisscrossed. So what I did was actually balance them out a little bit here by putting the fast fan on balanced and the slow fan on extreme to bring them closer RPM wise. Um, temps are looking pretty good though. I mean, like I said, we're at 69 degrees, pretty much locked right there on the graphics card for this air-cooled 2080 Ti in this small case, perfectly fine. Um, CPU is sitting at 60, 59, 60, not bad at all. So what I wanna do now is I want to run like a Cinebench test because I wanna see what we end up going up to when we really load this CPU. I wanna make sure that none of the weird blue screen stuff that he was experiencing is related to maybe a spike in temperature. So we're just gonna run R23 real quick. I don't really care what the score or anything is. I wanna see what the temperatures do. So I'm watching right here. This is under load, 86 degrees, 87. Remember, this is overclocked. We do have it locked on an all-core, 84, 86. 
the fans did immediately go full speed as well. So this is fine. Temperature wise, I'm perfectly happy with this. Look at the temperature dropping right now. Cause I think the turbo timer just ended. So let me just start a run right here with the cores. I want to see what the core temp spike to. Okay, some are in the 70s, some are in the 60s. Look at that, CPU temperature is at 67, 75. Where are our clock speeds? 4.7 all core. Okay, that's normal. I think we're, yep, yeah, and then they just dropped a 4.1. That is the turbo timer stuff. That is the ITX turbo timer stuff. That is working perfectly as intended. Some cores are at 4.2. Yeah, they're at 4.2. Our temperature right now is in the 60s. Yeah, your temps are great, Mark. There's nothing wrong with them whatsoever. Um, so we can fix that though. We can make that stop doing that because we got plenty of cooling on this. We're gonna also restart into his BIOS because I wanna make sure that these fans that are hooked up to the motherboard are speeding up like they're supposed to. There it is right there, exactly like I said. A high speed and a low speed fan. <laughs> because, because I'm an idiot. And I just went, they look the same, but they look the same, the two different motors obviously in there. Oh yeah, see, there you go, look. That's why they were going two different speeds. The CPU fan turbo curve, it's way different than the chassis fan turbo curve. So now that that's handled, let's go in here and let's fix his, uh... oh yeah, your XMP profile was disabled as well. You were, you were not running at your full potential, sir. Performance mode. Internal power management. Time window, 127. How high can we make that? 127, okay. So I don't expect the temperatures to change. They might come down a degree or two because I, in, I increase the intake fan speed. But what I wanna look at right now is the core clocks. I wanna see if they stay at this 4.7 gigahertz all, all core longer. Remember last time it only stayed for like 10 seconds and then it dropped. So cores are in the 70s and 60s. Perfectly fine with that. Still at 4.7. See how it's not dropping now? Staying at 4.7 the whole time? The, the, the CMOS clearly got cleared at some point, which caused uh, the XMP profile to reset and the turbo timer to reset. But if we look at our temps, low to high 70s, CPU temperature itself, look at that. It's the ADC on the package. Awesome. All right, we just did a little maintenance. I actually found some errors, not errors, but some settings that were incorrect and non-optimal on this. We gotta re-zip tie this back up before I forget. Um, got the fan sped back up where we need it. Got the XMP profile re-enabled, which is also allowed uh, because of a turbo timer and, and performance settings to keep the core clocks up. His FPS is gonna stay high. His temps are gonna stay low and you guys are gonna stay subscribed so you don't miss any of our upcoming content, which December, we're bringing you a video every single day in December, which means we are gonna be busting our heads against this wooden table to bring you as much content as we can that's fun and exciting and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So anyway, Mark, there you go. You got a GPU upgrade as well as a performance upgrade by clicking some buttons. Thanks for watching guys and as always, we'll see you in the next one.